Hi, um, Chef Santi. Um, I thought I'd tell you another story. I was just thinking about it, and I just thought, let me, let me put it on camera before I forget. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, uh, um, how I got into the industry, and uh, um, consequently, my first mentor, and um, how I fell in love with the industry based on um, a couple of factors, you know. So, I used to work for my dad, and um, like many dads, um, his expectations for me were really, really high. And uh, I had been working for the family businesses ever since I remember, you know. Anyway, but uh, I knew that that's not what I wanted to do. I knew that I didn't want to work for my dad. Um, I love him to bits, but I didn't want to work for him. And um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my life. Um, I was a, a new kid in a foreign country, and, uh, you know, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. My parents were fighting with me about doing, you know, further studies and going to university and so forth and whatever. Um, uh, but I didn't know, and I wasn't sure, and da da da. So, um, my father said, okay, well, while you're not, if you're not studying, whatever, you are going to, uh, uh, you're going to have to work, you know. Have to, yeah. um, one day I got the carriage and I spoke to my mum first and I said, mum, I, I don't want to work for dad anymore, I don't want to do this, I'll do something else. And she just said, speak to dad, I'm going to speak to him. Um, and about a, two weeks went past. I was working with my dad, and he just looks at me and he goes, um, so are you ever going to talk to me? And I'm like, uh, what do you mean? He says, well, your mum says you've got something to say to me. She told me like two weeks ago, and you still haven't spoken to me. And I'm like, oh, just, you know, uh, you know, like, I'll talk to you another time. You know, it's just, I know that, you know, just necessity and whatever. He, goes, no, no, no. he just went, beep, you know, just talk to me. Tell me what it is. So I said, you know, I, I don't want to do this, and I want to do something else. I don't want to do, and blah, 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 and, but I know that you need the help, and so forth. And, and he goes, okay, well, if you don't want to do this, and if you want to do something else, go and find that job, and off you go. I mean, uh, as long as you're not out of work, and we're not sustaining you, maintaining you, and so forth, because you can't afford to, uh, um, just go out there. Now... This was a Saturday that, I was, that we had this conversation. And, um, the next day, on Sunday, uh, the Spanish community where we lived, there was a Spanish club, and we used to get together. I don't know whether they still do or not, but uh, they used to get together and, uh, um, uh, every first Sunday of the month. And there was an opportunity for all the Spanish to get together and dance and drink and have a little fiesta, basically. Um, and um, there I am, and I'm with um, my best friend, and uh, I'm walking around with him, you know, thinking we're, you know, all cool and whatever, I guess. And I can see that uh, my, my, my dad is talking to his older brother, who used to run a restaurant. And uh, they're a chat, and they look at me, and they're both going, like this, and we go over, and I'm sort of, uh, uh, um, hey, how are you, how are you doing, Manolo? How are you doing? Hey, yeah, yeah. And he goes, yeah, your dad tells me you're looking for a job. And I went like, uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know. And I'm thinking about man, I only, I only spoke to him about it, like, you know, yesterday. And Manolo goes like, uh, you ever thought about working in a restaurant? And I'm like, well, not really. So my dad tells me, he goes, well, you start on Monday. And I was like, uh, sorry? Uh, what? Uh, and he goes like, yeah, it's a Monday. And Manolo goes like, see you Monday, nine o'clock sharp. So uh, I'm like, uh, uh, what? <laughs> and he goes, okay, off you go, I'll talk to you later. I'll tell you what you need and whatever later. So off we went, and I'm just looking at my friend and going like, between your brother and my dad, it just sorted out my life again. You know, it's like, anyway, Monday came and I arrived and my first job is to wash up, like washing up and stuff like that. And, and um, 
the uh, Manolo, the, the, the restaurant manager, who, it was a family business, uh, uh, who the owners, they sort of concentrated in the pub bar area, and their restaurant was a very well-known, very highly respected restaurant. But by the way, you go there today, and it looks exactly the same to what it did in 1987. Okay, exactly the same. So, um, <laughs> uh, um, and the funny thing is that I was actually there. I was actually there a few years ago, um, and no one really recognized me. And uh, behind the bar was a son who's my age, the son of the owner, and I swear that it was uh, the same gentleman. That, you know, that it looks exactly like his dad. But anyway, so I, I'm, I'm doing this and whatever, and um, the uh, a few days go by, whatever, and then Manolo says, "Oh, well, you're going to be helping in every area, by the way, right? So whatever you know, you need, you're going to be helping." And I went, "Yeah, no problem." Whatever, whatever. So uh, I'm starting to feel like this buzz, you know, like I'm really enjoying it. Food is great, you know. You're getting sort of like fed by the chef. The head chef was from the Canary Islands, Spanish. The second chef was uh, from Barcelona. And the third chef was Irish. And um, they went down in scale according to their position. I think like, you know, like this, their size. <laughs> and uh, 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 they were funny, funny, funny people. They were like co constantly bickering amongst each other, but the, the, their, connect, their connection was just amazing. This restaurant had only two sections. It had a hot area where all the hot stuff and main courses were done, and it had a cold area where all the starters and platters for the bar and desserts were done, which is where the Irish guy was working. Anyway, one day I got grabbed by the jacket, basically, and the chef said, right, you need to go and help the Irishman. In Spanish, he said this, right, and I'm going off, and He's teaching me how to make this thing, and the first thing he's teaching me how to do is these prong cocktails, and I'm making these prong cocktails. So by the way, I now make an homage to that dish uh, at my chef's table, and uh, uh, for the tasting menu. Uh, uh, anyway, so I, I, I make, you know, learn how to cook the prawns, chop all the uh, lettuce, make the marrow sauce. I mean, everything, all the trimmings used to go in that glass that goes around the dollop of marrow sauce and whatever. And uh, it was actually the owner, the old man, who taught me to perfect how to perfect the actual marrow sauce. Because I used to be the first one in with him, and he will actually clean and sort out the cellar, get the kegs ready, and all that kind of stuff. And I will go in and do all that sort of uh, little prep prior, making the sauces, making the sauce tartare, making all of this. I used to make all of those. Um, anyway, so. Uh, uh, that was my beginning in the, in, in the kitchen, and, and my first day in the kitchen was one that I remember because I carried a scar. And uh, I remember this, the, and the, there was this beautiful waitress used to work in the front of the house, and uh, she comes in, and she comes in through the door of the, of the restaurant, and she's going, like, where's my thermidor, where's my lobster thermidor? And the chef goes, it's right here. And he had it in his hand in a cloth. And uh, he puts it down on the pass, which was quite high up in the pass. There are two levels, but he put it on the top of it. And me thinking, you know, I'm going to be helpful, uh, but knowing nothing about the kitchen, I just went boom, and I put my hand on this aluminium tray that had just come from being under the salamander. And I'm trying to let go of it, and it's completely stuck to me, and there are lots of thermidors going all over the place. Now, I immediately realized that none of the chefs gave a hoot about my hand being stuck to uh, the lots of thermidor plate, but the fact that the lobster of thermidor was no good anymore, and they had to make another one. So I, uh, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and left my entire skin, which I have a, a scar here from it. And I said, I left my entire skin. It literally, you could see my palm on the actual tray. And I remember the, the, the Irish, the Irish chef, 
I went over to uh, the ice box and put some ice in a cloth, came back and she said, hold on to that. And I'm like, oh, 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 oh. you know, and, uh, and all, day, all day long, I'm still chopping, I'm still doing stuff, holding on to this thing. And I asked for a bottle of water that I could freeze and I froze that and I was holding on to this thing and I'm holding on for dear life to this thing and then bang. And I remember Manolo coming to me, he goes, like, do, you need to, do you need to go? And, do you need to go? Do you need to go to hospital? Are you okay? And I'm like, and people, everyone's like, ah, it was one of the busiest days of the year. And um, everyone's looking at me and whatever. And I'm like, no, no, no. And I, I must have been pale as a ghost. Anyway, the shift ended. And um, they used to call me El Nino, the kid, uh, until the day I left. And the chef just came along and said, well done, Nino, you know, like, that's what a chef is all about. No matter what, you just keep on going. And that day, I just, even though through all that pain, I just was, I was like, I love that. That was amazing. And eventually my hand healed and you moved on and I never went back to washing up. Um... And shortly after that, um, Manolo, who used to run the actual restaurant, the waiters and whatever, said, oh, we need, you in the, we need you in the front. We need you in the front today, so you need to come, uh, you know, later on ready for that. And I'm like, for the evening shift. I went, oh, okay, okay. So I came back and it is busy. It is so busy. And back then, I mean, like, people were dying for a long time, especially, you know, the yappies and all that. I used to come and entertain and spend thousands lunch. Anyway, so um, they had this guy who had a table for six, and there was, you can clearly see it was six businessmen, you know, who were still wearing all their attire. Um, and um, they paid their bill, you know, after a spending, they had Petrus, they had, I mean, you mentioned the wines, and they had a Dom Perignon, I mean, uh, they had they had a lot, I remember the first time I learned about what a Petrus was, and all that kind of stuff, you know, and how expensive it was, it was just ridiculous, the bill was huge, and I'm like, what the heck? Anyway, so, uh, um, they're paying the, they pay the bill, and as they're leaving, all six of them are going, oh, my God, that was the most amazing meal. Oh, the service is incredible. So we're all standing there, and they would, the waiters would say goodbye and goodbye and goodbye. They were the last ones. Um, and um, I hear that, you know, two or three of the, the senior staff, including Manolo, are this line. I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I said to, there was a guy called uh, uh, Alfonso, and I said to him, like, dude, what's going on? He says, oh, they haven't left a tip. And I'm like, oh, well, they haven't left. And I didn't think much of it because I didn't understand. Now, back then, these guys who used to work in the industry, whatever, you know, 75% of their earnings were tips, were gratuities. And they make a hell lot of money. So, with that, I hear... Manolo says, Santi, go and grab all their jackets, go by the door and wait for me there. Do not put the jackets on them. So I went, okay. And all of a sudden, I see him going into the restaurant. And as they're coming along, he intercepted them. So they're coming that way and he intercepted them. But I was watching him coming towards me. And I swear, it was like he had, he was on skates, he had no feet, it was just gliding and went, gentlemen. And he goes, oh, and every, the two of the guys who knew Manolo had said, hey, Manolo, that was amazing, that was fantastic. Oh, he goes, oh, you did like it. You had a good time. And the guys go, well, yes. Oh, thank goodness for that. And he goes, uh, the, all, the, all the, uh, the people go, like, what we did was amazing. He goes, oh, well, I'm so happy about that. Oh. And he goes, well, not a, why, 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 are you, why are you saying that? And he goes, like, the staff are all over there. They're so upset. They're all talking about it, going, they, somebody did something wrong. Someone didn't look after them right. They're all blaming each other um, uh, because they didn't tip. And with this, I tell you, I, I, I'm last standing there going, did he just tell them off and say, get your money out? And 
all of a sudden, every single one of them just started getting these wads of cash and going, no, 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 who, oh, we didn't, how, how could it be? Oh, my goodness, it was an oversight. Manolo, you know that I always look after you guys. I am so sorry. He goes, no, 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 I know, I know you do. That's why I was so scared. I was worried that we'd sort of upset you somehow. And all of a sudden, they're going, one, two, three, four. <laughs> and it just kept on coming and kept on coming and kept on coming. And then wad of money just getting get bigger and bigger and bigger and everybody's like putting money in his hand and he's going and at the same time he's sort of like he's putting their jackets over them and so on he goes gentlemen i'm so happy that we didn't upset you that we that you were happy and that you had an amazing day and all that sort of stuff Manolo, yes we did and they left feeling completely bad while he just with the smoothest i mean i never i i, I only met one other guy many years later who had that kind of smoothness where he could say and do anything to a client and the client will be painfully embarrassed that they were the one uh, a guilt or whatever. But it's just the way that he glided towards these people, the way that he spoke to them and the mannerism that he spoke. That between what happened to me in the kitchen and this uh, master at his trade uh, just did in front of me that I realized that I had fallen in love with the industry and never looked back and um, here we are today and um, another one of the amazing stories that uh, that make up the history my history um, and so on so I hope you enjoyed it and um, send your your story <laughs>